father figure in my life growing up. So she took on a lot of roles. Uh, and like I said, uh, she's strong willed. Um, if you wanted to hear the truth, uh, my grandmother would tell you the truth. She taught me a great deal, obviously. Um, she's a very proud woman. And um, she taught me to be a very proud person. Um, she really stood up for what she believed in, whether she was right or wrong. Growing up with, up with her, she was um, she was really nice. Uh, she was given, um, being the only child. I have to say, I did get a lot of the best things, and um, she was always proud of me. Um, and she taught me, you know, to uh, right from wrong and how to love because of her past, you know, with um, the racial, you know, past like that. And she's like, well, you know, that was then. And so it's, it's different now. And regardless of the color, you still love everyone. She didn't really talk about it a whole lot. Um, she just always said, you know, that they had a hard time, you know, coming up and um, they had to um, what her mom said, you know, that they had to leave their their home, and um, but she was only three and a half, so she really didn't talk about it that much. One big thing, she's um, she's like, don't lie. I can't stand a lie because a lie is the whole, it's the part of it. you know that started the whole thing a lie, mm -hmm. you know, just one person telling a lie, and it just created all of that disaster over a lie. We really don't talk about it that much, but like if we mention a lot, of, you wouldn't believe a lot of people don't even know about Rosewood. You know, um, I don't think they really teach that. It's not really in the textbooks in schools, you know. So, but when people, or like if we mention it to someone, they'll go, oh, really? And like they'll say, well, I'm going to Google it. And then, you know, like they'll Google it and then they'll come back and say, oh, wow, I can't believe all that. Did that really happen? I believe they said that it was a white man, I think they said it came from Gainesville. And they she always say they they say they went through the swamp and then um they caught a train to Gainesville. They they made a lot of sacrifices, you know, that they could have easily given up and you know, they all could have gotten killed and we would have never known about it. Um, but they fought. Um, and you know, Rama is a fighter and um, she has really taken care of herself over the years and, and, and then she's really taught me i mean not even by even telling me anything just her actions you know the, the way she goes she lives day by day and grandma she's a fighter and um you know i can't help but just try to you know fight my daily battles as much as i can and, and again teach my kids to, to you know be, be fighters you know not just don't give up um you know things may be hard but you just keep you just keep pushing and she's done that she's been a fighter all her life but um her older sister margie she she was like 14 so she knew a lot about she had it a lot of stories. she had she really had stories about it and um until she died she was still like a little frightened and she kind of like didn't trust people you know and um for instance, <laughs> Carlos came home one night and um, some white guys brought him home because we live in a small <laughs> town and Aunt Margie almost had a fit. She's like, boy, you can't have no white people bringing you home. You know what happened to us? They burnt us down and we had to run and you can't be doing that. And so I said, Aunt Margie, it's different now. Everybody's not like that. She goes, well, I don't care. You have to be careful. He cannot have no white boys and no white girls bringing him home. <laughs> so she was really, she was still terrified. She really was. Yeah, she talked about um, Gainesville and um, they was going to school, you know, and they had to, she always was telling us, you all are blessed because you can catch the school bus and you can drive to school. And we always had to walk and the freezing cold, you know, we had to walk to school. And she always talked about she would walk to school and then she would say, the blacks, we had to walk to school and the whites rode the school bus and they would pick at us because we was walking.
but she was big in education for us, you know, and she always tell the grand, her great grands, uh, you go to school and you learn now and be the best you can be. And of course, Carlos got, um, from being a descendant of the Rosewood, he got a scholarship and um, Bethune Cookman in Daytona. There was no way I, I could not go to college and, and, and get an education, you know, seeing what she had to go through and, you know, all the struggles to, to get my mom to the point where she was to be able to support me to go to college. So uh, it just felt like uh, it was something that um, that I had to do. Uh, I, I had a, I, I ended up picking uh, education, but um, my first choice was, was criminal justice. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, but it's, you know, somewhere down the line, um, something happened and, and my, my mind changed. Um, I just felt like I could make a difference in uh, kids' lives, maybe educate them uh, on, on how to do things the right way. And, you know, just some of the things that my, my grandmother taught me, you know, I, I felt like I could instill in, in other kids, you know, while they're growing up. One of the things I always uh, tell, we, we try to tell our kids, and, and I try to tell the kids in, in a classroom, like, you have no idea how good you have it. Um, because a lot of people had to make a lot of sacrifices in order for us to get uh, where we're at. So, so what, what better way to, uh, to repay my, you know, my grandmother for going through what she did and, you know, than to try to educate myself as much as I can? Uh, because, you know, we, we have it good. And we have it good because my grandmother and other people like her um, had to struggle to, uh, you know, to make, help, help this country make changes. Um, so, yeah, I just feel like, like it's a, a right in passage that I try to do as much as I can to help our kids become educated. If you believe in something, uh, you need to fight for it, you know, stand up for yourself. You know, don't let uh, other people run you over. Um, you know, things may happen, um, people may talk about you, uh, sometimes you may be alone in how you feel, but if you really believe in, uh, in, in, uh, in what you feel, you know, stand up for yourself and, and fight for what you believe in. And she, she, she taught me that, and I, I really believe in that. You want to come to sports? She swears she was the best. Uh, what was it? Basketball, Basketball. Basketball player. <laughs> yeah, I, my my talents came from her. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what she always said. <laughs> yeah. You got your talents from me because I was a good basketball player, and she said she played baseball. Yeah. And we really? was like, okay, really, mom? She playing? <laughs> she playing school? That's what she said. She told me. That's yeah. what she said. She played sports. Uh, she would be qu quick to criticize if she, if she thought it was doing something wrong. She would. And uh, you know she would she wouldn't mind using a few choice words either. Yeah, I don't know why they decide to do that. They they so stupid. I don't understand like, why they run the ball this way when like, the 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 um the lane was this way. I I don't know why they do that. So she was she, so she was it was so funny. She was into oh yeah, she it was, was into it. Into it. And yeah, I was she, like, what? Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with that quarterback. Like Bortles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Jack's fan. <laughs> we're Jack fans. Yeah, yeah we're Jack fans too. Yeah. She is uh she is very big into fashion. Um, because oh, yeah. at the house, um, she has to have you know, and she's also uh, um, part of the Eastern Star. Mm -hmm. um, what's that? It's a the Masonic. Masonic. It's like a Masonic it's organization. Yeah. And uh, and, you know, it's I think it's different levels to um, to to what you can um, become. And um, I believe she ended up being part of the Golden Circle, and that's like the very top um, yeah. um, of the Eastern Star organization. So you know, she so she and she she was really into that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, she just goes to show you how much of a leader she was. Go to my grandma and say, Grandma, I need an East outfit. And um, we were going to the, the best of the best store to get the best of the best. And she really believes in getting the best of the best. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm, I'm not getting a cheap pair of shoes. I'm getting a, a pair of Stacy Adams. A pair that was $80. Oh, yeah. So at the time, you know, Stacy Adams was, was the shoe you wanted to get. And uh, Grandma was going to get me a pair of Stacy Adams. So I, I know I, I think a little, I got a, a little bit of that from her. Uh, you know, you get what you pay for. She really believed in that. Yeah. Um, speaking of funny stories, um, she was she would let you know too, cause uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. Yeah, I wasn't always big, so um, you know, uh, my wife got pregnant. We started having kids together, so I started gaining a little weight. Uh, so um, I walked in one day, and Grandma, you know, hadn't seen me in a while, cause you know, um, at one point we were staying in Jacksonville, 
and I came back, gained a little weight, and she, um, I walked in, she, she, looked, she looked at me and said, boy, you're getting so big. Why, why are you so big? <laughs> and she, um, and she, she, recently she was doing that to people that she hadn't seen in a while, and, um, and she was, and she's always been in shape. Um, and she, you know, by eating right and doing the right things. So, you know, me, not so much. Um, so she would always let you know right away um, that if, if you're getting, boy, you're so big. What you doing? <laughs>